Hello friends! Tonight we're going to get back to reviewing some Aero Precision parts. This review is part of a series breaking down all the bits in my Aero lightweight carbine, but the part we're going to review uh, isn't every AR-15 that I have. I consider it or something like it to be essential uh, for me personally. I waited a long time to review this part because Frankly, I didn't believe the hype. Um, often with gun stuff, we get very excited about some small part and ultimately just resume using the original stuff. Um, a great example is the uh, fancy Glock parts. People start replacing every part in their Glocks with more expensive ones. Next thing you know, your fancy gun is less reliable than the ugly black brick that you originally took home from the gun store. So stick with the brick. And it's often the same with AR-15 parts. Uh, the bad lever comes to mind. It was going to change how we reload, they said. Um, instead, it just changed how we break our bolt release levers. The bad lever is like Pinocchio's nose, um, only it seems to grow every time a company releases a bullshit aftermarket part uh, that's backed by wild marketing claims about how it's going to change shooting forever. Anyhow, today we are going to look at the Aero Precision Nickel Boron Bolt Carrier Group. Other than the very shiny, beautiful finish, although on this one it's uh, a little bit less shiny than it once was, this is a standard AR-15 bolt carrier group otherwise. If you've built an AR, well, you've, you've probably looked at these fancy bolts and thought, is it worth the extra expense? What does the finish actually do? And how gaudy is it really? Uh, it's, it's pretty damn gaudy, and I'll include some, uh, some pictures of, of what these look like in guns along with, uh, with this video so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. It's really, really gaudy. Uh, when the BCG is out of the gun, it looks like a Middle Eastern autocrat commissioned some sort of HR gig or butt plug, and you're welcome. Good luck cleansing your brain of the image of Saddam Hussein jamming this thing into the devil's ball pit. Uh, now that most of you are thoroughly disgusted and a small percentage of us somewhat aroused, let's take a look at the features. Features. I'd list the specs for you, but you already know the specs. It's a mil-spec AR-15 bolt carrier group that's made a funny color. The only difference is that, like other aero parts, this one is made to a very high standard. The bolt itself is made of 9310 tool steel, which is itself a bit stronger than mil-spec Carpenter 158, and it's magnetic particle inspected and all that stuff. It's a great bolt. It's an aero part, so it's awesome. The aero BCG weighs 11.52 ounces, uh, which is pretty normal. Oh, and this BCG is also bright silver, shiny silver because it has a nickel boron finish. It looks kind of crazy, but also really cool. It looks like a part that fell off of data from Star Trek The Next Generation. And what does that mean exactly, that it's, that it's shiny? The most simplistic explanation is that using electroplating, a layer of nickel is built up on the outside of the steel in place of a traditional finish like phosphate or nitride. The nickel is easy to clean. Most dirt and carbon junk just wipes right off of it. It's also extremely slick. Uh, and runs well with less lube and when dirty. The nickel boron bolt also operates more smoothly in general. So why? Well, uh, nickel boron coatings add an awesome amount of natural lubricity. You can feel it when you handle the part. It's just very slick. I was surprised by how noticeable this is. The natural lubricity means that gunk and carbon, it just has a harder time sticking to this coating. So why choose nickel boron over other finishes? Well, most AR bolt carrier groups have a phosphate or parkerized coating. The original AR-10s and early M16s had chromed BCGs, as these have many of the benefits of nickel boron. It's said that the chrome isn't as hard as nickel boron and can chip. I've never had a chrome BCG, so I can't say from experience. Phosphate coatings were chosen early in the life of the M16 because they're a lot cheaper to apply and they last longer. A phosphate coating is essentially parkerizing, and in the 1960s, the U.S. military knew a hell of a lot about how parkerizing would wear over time. But phosphate finishes are very rough, as you know if you've ever felt a part on a parkerized gun, or even the outside of a parkerized gun. It's rough and induces friction, even against your finger. Phosphate bolts will wear in, but this takes a long time, and you'll see that they wear smooth where the bolt moves against the upper receiver. This takes time and ammo, and until the phosphate bolt wears in, it requires a lot of lube, and this lube attracts dust and dirt, getting all that shit in your gun and reducing reliability. Eventually, when the parkerized bolt wears in, you can back off on the lube. Phosphate bolts also feel rough riding in the gun, and the recoil impulse is a little bit less smooth when they're new, but that's, that's a minor detail. Most folks aren't even going to notice that. 
Uh, if you check the chamber, uh, you'll notice that a phosphate bolt may require you to pull the bolt back further or to use the assist to get the round home when the bolt is new. When they're worn, this isn't an issue. Uh, but in my experience, phosphate bolts with less than a few thousand rounds through them require more cleaning and more lube to be reliable. I've had a few guns that would get weird after 300 to 350 rounds, though once they were worn in, you could go a lot further without a good cleaning and lubing. So it makes you wonder, terrible ammo problems aside, would the original chrome bolts have improved the reputation of the early M16s? I have no idea, but it's an interesting thought. I will say though, the nickel boron bolts feel uh, even smoother than a worn in phosphate bolt, even when they're new. It's, it's really kind of incredible. So if you want to improve how your gun runs and feels, the nickel boron bolt is a great part to try. We'll talk about how much these things are, are improved in a moment. The nickel boron bolts are definitely easier to clean and look after. In general, junk just wipes off. Phosphate bolts aren't exactly hard to clean, but that roughness that you can feel, those tiny nooks and crannies hold on to dirt and muck and carbon. But the small pieces on a nickel boron bolt are not as easy to clean as I had hoped. Uh, once you disassemble the thing, um, you're going to have to do some scraping like you do with a phosphate bolt. It's just the nature of the of the beast, uh, the, the AR-15 bolt beast, I suppose. But this does save time. It's still easier overall. The downside is that the nickel boron bolts are more expensive, cheaper than some of the fancier coatings, but still more than a good old-fashioned phosphate one. How has the nickel boron bolt carrier group performed? I've been very impressed. I don't have an AR-15 without one of these in it these days. I was very skeptical at first, and I figured it'd just make the gun easier to clean, and that would be the only benefit. But I noticed immediately that the nickel boron felt smooth, like a nice worn AR, and that feeling only got better with time. This gun has a lot of rounds through it, and the bolt runs as smooth as an oil slick, you know, whatever that means. It makes running the bolt effortless, and if you check the chamber by pulling the bolt open just a hair, it doesn't stick. And like I said, the nickel boron bolts are a bit easier to clean and uh, generally very durable. Though it darkens with use, as you can see, the finish seems to last far longer than parkerizing and nitriding. Uh, but for me, that's not the greatest benefit. None of the things that I've mentioned so far are. The biggest benefit is the boost to reliability. So I don't have a way to scientifically test how much this coating helps, but I can tell you that I use far less lube than I would have to with a phosphate bolt. I use a few dabs of ALG Very Thin Grease and then I smear it around on the rubbing surfaces with my finger and these bolts will run for a very long time. This bolt ran for well over a thousand rounds without cleaning or any additional lube. That might not sound like that much, but a phosphate bolt, even a worn in one, will get very sluggish after six or seven hundred rounds. New ones get sluggish after about half that and even then more lube is required to keep them running. With the nickel boron bolt, it never so much as slowed down. I just got tired of looking at how filthy it was and cleaned it. Also, I whacked the camera a moment ago, so it's probably wildly off-center now. AR-15s have a reputation for requiring slightly more maintenance than something like an AK, and the nickel boron bolt helps cut that maintenance down. Uh, it also makes it so that if you don't like cleaning your gun, you don't have to do it as often. This coating gives you a little extra peace of mind that should you need the rifle to fire and cycle, even if it's a little dirtier than it should be, it will. And it looks cool and makes the rifle feel great. What's not to love? Final thoughts. So should you get this bolt carrier group? Maybe. I certainly consider it to be worth the extra expense. But phosphate bolts have been working just fine for a very long time and aren't going away anytime soon. In a few years, there will inevitably be some new wonder coating that will probably work even better than nickel boron. If you clean your rifle even semi-regularly, you probably won't notice that much difference between the bolts. To me, these aren't that much more expensive, and it's worth having the lubricity to help the gun function when I inevitably forget to clean it. I guess what I'm trying to say is that eh, I'm kind of dumb, and this coating is for dumb, forgetful people, I guess. So if you're dumb and forgetful, maybe you would find this useful too. Thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. I will talk to you soon. Good night.